from both scopes, we can see that the line currents are still DC currents. However, we can see that the line currents in the right scope are lagging the line currents in the left scope by 15 degrees, which is equal to the firing angle values. Nonetheless, we can see from the width of the current waveforms in both scopes that the conduction angle of the thyristor is remain unchanged. It is 120 degrees. Other than that, regarding the output voltage and current waveforms, we can see in both scopes that the waveforms are continuous. However, due to the wave shape of the output voltage and current waveform, we can see that the average output voltage of the rectifier with alpha equal to 15 degrees is lower than the rectifier with alpha equal to 0 degree. We will discuss the relationship between the average output voltage and the firing angle when we analyze the waveform using a mathematical approach. Next, let's see what happened when the firing angle is equal to 30 degrees. From the scope, we can see the amplitude of the output and current waveform reach zero at certain time values. Therefore, these waveforms are not considered continuous anymore. Based on this condition, we can expect that the waveform will have a discontinuous wave shape if the firing angle is higher than 30 degrees. Let's prove the hypothesis by applying 60 degrees firing angle. According to the simulation results, the hypothesis is successfully verified since the output voltage and current waveforms have discontinuous wave shapes. Other than that, we can also see that the firing angle has shortened the conduction angle and therefore it reduces the average output voltage value. Now, let's increase the firing angle to 120 degrees. From the scope, we can see that the output voltage and current waveforms are continuous and similar to the output voltage and current waveforms when the rectifier was operating at zero firing angle. Please remember that these waveforms are also similar to the output voltage and current waveforms of a three-phase uncontrolled half-wave rectifier with resistive load. As a conclusion, to vary the average or RMS output voltage and current, the firing angle of a three-phase controlled half-wave rectifier must be higher than zero and lower than 120 degrees. When the firing angle is less than 30 degrees, we see from the simulation results that the rectifier will work 
under continuous output voltage and current conditions. Meanwhile, when the firing angle is higher than 30 degrees and lower than 120 degrees, the rectifier operates at this continuous output voltage and current conditions. Next, I will show you how to derive the equation of the average and RMS output voltages of the control half-wave rectifier. Regardless of the operating conditions of the rectifier, we will start the derivation using the general equation of both average and RMS voltages. Then, we will change the range of the integral functions according to the output voltage reform. Based on the continuous output voltage reform, the equation of the average and RMS output voltages can be obtained as follows. <music>